But have you observed what guidance is given concerning the gifts? It says the gifts of the Spirit or the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone for the profit of all. Mm. So that gifting or whatever gifting you're going to receive is for the sake of others. It simply means when it's expressed, it's for the sake of others. Catch Amazing Minds, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Switch my heart and do you, you will find It's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah There's no lie I will hold you Come over Forever be my lover Woman in the sun Come on, look at you Come on, Jay It's Friday Bible Talks How are you guys doing? Are you subscribed? Are you already feeling the longing, the desire in your heart to watch Bahatram? You're welcome to Amazing Mind Zambia's first late night show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. Show is available Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. And you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. As you know, Monday is for political discussions. Wednesday is for the educative segment of the show and Friday is for Bible Talks. So we have been doing a series on this uh, Bible talks, gifts of the spirit, or as the King James calls it, the manifestation of the spirit. We did word of wisdom, then word of knowledge. But I told you we'd be having some people uh, in studio, some men of God, some pastors, to explain to us some of these gifts so that you don't just hear it from me. Yeah, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. Today in studio, we have a very powerful man of God. Uh, in, in, in the Pentecostal circles, they call him the demon destroyer. Or is it the, the commander? <laughs> How are you doing, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the commander. Yeah, the commander. <laughs> that sounds like becoming a spiritual character. <laughs> Spiritual God. You don't say. Uh, I, I hear when people come to your church, there's a lot of screaming, Prophet, say! Man of God, finish us! Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. You heard wrongly. But nevertheless, thanks for having me today. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we have Prophet Gomezio in studio. Prophet Gomezio is the senior pastor of Life Rich Church. A very vibrant church, very prophetic church. And we have a, his a rich history uh doing ministry praying together in times past we did a lot of prayer together actually do you remember mm -hmm. that we were um for a lengthy period of time praying i think we were doing prayer coordinator co positions yeah i was i was your vice right exactly yeah so he used to send me prayer points and uh, cause me to fast a lot yeah who knew one day we'll be doing a podcast discussing the gift of faith mm. <laughs> so, how have you been? I've been good. I've been good. Um, uh, the Lord is keeping us very well. And Okay, how's ministry? Well, ministry is advancing and um, we're definitely working in the world of the Lord. Uh, all I can say is the Lord is in charge. Okay, I've yeah. been seeing your, I've been following every now and then uh, posts to do with to do with your, your ministry. I saw this past week, you were discussing the man with uh, 5,000 demons, with legions of demons. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, was just, that was just part of it. And, and, and relating it to, <laughs> it, it was a good point though, it relating point. it to nakedness. And you were oh, saying, oh, goodness. for some of you, you're probably just at 2,000. That's why you have not completely undressed. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. Uh, well, uh, it was just, uh, just part of the sermon, discussing quite a number of things that affect the church community as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. So we looked at the church community uh, in details and uh, we were just basically looking at how uh, we ought to position us, ourselves yeah. as people part of the body of Christ, how we ought to understand each other and even grow to become uh, a people that Christ intends us to become. 
Yeah. So there is so much going on within the church community. But at the end of the day, we progress and grow uh, in the ways of the Lord. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, your your church is uh, predominantly youth, right? Yeah. How do, how is it? What is it like pastoring the youth? Well, are you dealing with a mature set of youth, or is it? Does it feel like pastoring youth? Well, yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, how I can comment concerning that is, um, I guess the Lord has given grace uh, to yeah. handle. Uh, well, I know uh, majority is the youth, uh, though we, we have different age groups, uh, mothers, oh. widows, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, children as well. So the Lord has actually given us grace and understanding to handle all age groups. Remember, it's like a charge that was given to Timothy to deal yeah. with the younger ones, the older ones, the older women, yeah. the older yeah. men. So um, we... We, we have been given that divine grace and wisdom to deal with everyone in that age group. Yeah, so if, with the young one, uh, we, we know how to deal with them, you know how to deal with them eh? <laughs> and uh, know how to understand them in, uh, in their seasons and, you know. Uh, yeah, quite frankly, I think young pastors are not given enough credit for the amount of work they're doing, especially those that, that get to deal. I know you get to deal with uh, elderly people as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, elderly people can tend to have mature burdens, you know, <laughs> burdens beyond your years. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of godly wisdom to have to deal with, uh, to deal with the same. I've been reading about Joshua in the Bible and how yeah. he had to take up responsibility. Anyway, he was considered young, but he was quite an old man. Exactly. But yeah, but he still had to take up generations on his shoulders. Yeah. And I just think young pastors are not given enough credit for taking up that responsibility. Well, uh, that's no stress to us. <laughs> At the end of the day, the Lord is the rewarder. Yeah. And uh, we're doing it for his glory. That's right. So, um, we're discussing, we've been discussing gifts of the spirit mm -hmm. these past few weeks. Uh, we're doing a series on what I like to say the King James refers to as the manifestation of the spirit. Amazing. And uh, we have discussed two so far, the gift of uh, the word of wisdom, mm -hmm. gift of word of knowledge. Yeah. And so today, as you know, we're discussing faith, but generally in terms of the gifts of the spirit, what is the one thing you believe Believers need to know about the gifts of the Spirit. What's that one thing you you think right now is a must know concerning the gifts of the Spirit um, from your perspective as a pastor? Okay. Um, uh, first of all, the Bible actually tells us concerning the spiritual, we ought not to be ignorant. Yeah. And uh, for me, what I would like to highlight to many believers out there especially with what they need to know concerning the gifts of the Spirit, <clears throat> is how the Bible brings it out that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to profit all. Yeah. So uh, what's cardinal to know about these giftings is that they are not necessarily talents to benefit <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. but uh, more of service gifts that are meant to benefit everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they take us back to servanthood and stewardship. Mm. And um, for me, it's it's vital for everyone to understand that you have been divinely enabled so that you can be a blessing to your sphere of contact. Mm. So that's one major key thing uh, I would love and really want everyone to awaken to, to be a blessing to their sphere of contact. I like the words you use, divinely enabled yeah yeah that's a good that's a good description i wonder why i never say that before <laughs> <laughs> divinely enabled do you think every believer has spiritual gifts do you believe every believer has spiritual gifts everyone who has believed in jesus do we all have spiritual gifts or are these things that uh, only the mature can access well um if you look at first peter chapter 4 verse 10 the bible says to each one who has received a spiritual gift uh, or to each one who has received a gift, let them use that gift uh, diligently to serve others. Uh, then also in 1 Corinthians 12, we're told that uh, the gifts, of, the manifestation of the gifts, of the, the manifestation of the spirit is given to everyone 
to profit all. So these, these gifts are distributed by the Holy Spirit to each believer. All right. It simply means no believer is exempt from being a blessing yeah. to, to, to <laughs> their sphere of, <laughs> of contact. Yeah. And also, they are not just given to every believer. They are given as a believer. There's a place where we need to be stewards. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is no one who is exempt from stewardship. Yeah. So uh, they are definitely uh, dispatched to every believer. But even though they are dispatched to every believer, it just matters whether you as a child of God are going to have that gifting or empowerment to be uh, dormant yeah. or dominant. <laughs> dominant or dominant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is something I forgot about you, that you are, you know wordplay. You know, you can, you can make really good... Uh, Punchlines. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. This is, I actually saw your younger brother uh -huh. on Facebook the other day talking about how understanding, mm -hmm. uh, he talked about how in a building, yeah. I'm trying to remember, in a building, the physical components are held by the components we can't see. Uh -huh. That understanding is that there is something under what's standing, something like that. He, there was a way that he said it, and Got I was like, out. oh, nice. Nice. Amazing, amazing, yeah, amazing. I might use this on the podcast. You just used it. <laughs> <laughs> I just used it. <laughs> I <see. laughs> yeah, I remember earlier on in uh, a Christian journey, I did. I had. I had a mentor. I was. I was going to to this church where I met this young prayerful man uh -huh. who began to teach me a lot about the Lord. And together with him, we went to hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember going to UTH. I remember going to a few health centers yeah. and we were praying for people just on the basis of faith. I never really had anyone come to me and say, you have the gift of healing or, you know, but on the basis of faith, we began to exercise this. We'd go to hospitals, we'd go to homes, pray for the sick. And what I realized was people were getting healed. Mm. People were actually getting healed. Yeah. And I guess Maybe the confusion for many people is to know exactly when they can begin to utilize their gift. Do we have to wait for that moment where Prophet Gomezio has to come and announce to us yeah. that we are endowed with the gift of word of knowledge or the yeah. gift of healing or uh, yeah. workings of miracles? Personally, in your Christian journey, can you trace a point when you began to exercise these gifts and what prompted it? Was it necessarily something that came from someone telling you that, I can see you have this gift yeah. or was it from you exercising it by faith? What prompted your initial use of the gifts you've identified within yourself? Well, you will notice that before Paul begins to teach about uh, the gifts of the spirit, he says, I want you not to be ignorant of the spiritual yeah. or rather uh, 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 the happenings of, 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 of the spirit. And the reason why he says so is because sometimes you can have an empowerment, but because you don't know how it operates or, uh, don't know the boundaries of how to you really express yourself through that uh, gifting. Uh, sometimes as a child of God, mm. you may end up becoming dormant. Okay. So uh, I believe if I were to trace the workings of the gifts of the spirit in my life, it had to first uh, do or rather I had to learn. You know, I had, yeah. to, I had to learn about it. You know, mm. spiritual things need to be learned. Okay. Mm. I mean, it's like prayer. Uh, we can observe someone praying, but even the disciples will end up saying, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Yeah. You know, so uh, I initially, I I didn't know that, you know, there were, there were such things as gifts of the spirit or such empowerments until uh, I had to learn, okay, uh, being taught by my father and mentor. Uh, Prophet Moileli uh, unveiled us to this truth and I said, okay, or, uh, showing us that these giftings are for the sake of others. It, it made, you know, me understand how I ought to be relevant in yeah. this world and uh, getting to study them. Um, it, it, it then positioned me, you know, uh, to dig deep and, and understand uh, what, what I actually uh, have. And uh, by the grace of the Lord, uh, I began to see the manifestation of uh, uh, the gifts of, of, of the Spirit, you know, here and there. Yeah. And uh, it, it was unfolding, you know. <laughs> was this an experience that was uh, 
something you grow into? I mean, yes. the, the manifestation of each gift, was it something that It's grew? something that you have to grow into, actually. Uh, there are two interactions that Paul tells Timothy to handle the, with the gifts. Yeah. The first interaction he says is, do not neglect the gifting that is in you uh, from the laying of, of hands. All right. Then uh, in his second writing to Timothy, he says, fun up the gifting of God into flames. Yeah. So there's a place where you can basically stir it up and just not neglect it. How, you, how are you not going to neglect it? By exercising it, you know. But then there's also another place of you funning it up, you growing into it. Okay, mm. obviously we grow into something by constant use and mm. also uh, uh, engaging in other spiritual exercises like prayer, uh, studying of the word, mm. which... Uh, sharpen our senses mm. and just mm. help us to become better. In, mm. So uh, does this mean that <clears throat> using spiritual gifts effectively has a lot to do with how sharp how sharp our spiritual senses are? Um, There's a scripture I like quoting mm-hmm. here on Bible Talks yeah. from the book of Hebrews yeah. uh, that talks about strong meat is for them uh, that uh, by reason of use of have developed their senses exactly. to discern good and evil exactly. would you relate that to what you're saying about sharpening our gifts um i mean growing g- growing uh, growing our gifts would you relate that to sharpening our senses in in the sense of hebrews the way it talks about by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern whether right or wrong yeah, yeah. so yes of, of course they'll have to they'll, you remember uh, uh Paul also once said something uh, concerning uh, uh, the operation of the Spirit. And he said, uh, whether we prophesy uh, or heal, we're doing it as uh, as a proportion of our faith. Oh, yeah. 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 So it, 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 it simply means mm. at the end of the day, mm. um, even the empowerment that we, we have will be aided by how we've improved ourselves. Yeah, as vessels. I, I mean, think about it. Remember, the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels, mm. right? It talks about both the treasure and it talks about the vessel. So mm. imagine if I have uh, juice in a bottle. Yeah. Okay. There's, there may not, there, there may be nothing wrong with the juice. Okay. Mm. Yet, if the bottle has holes, uh. it, it 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 affects <laughs> yeah. the usage, you know, <laughs> yeah. altogether. So. Uh, Growing spiritually, uh, engaging in spiritual exercises will actually make you a better vessel. I remember there are even different qualities of vessels that are revealed in, in, in the book of Timothy. Mm. Some of clay, some mm. of shiny. Mm. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's qualities altogether, but they are vessels. Mm. All right. <laughs> so wow. Uh, wow. As, as a vessel, obviously, we, we need to come to a place where we, we build and improve ourselves so that we can allow uh, God uh, to express himself, you know, fully. But for the gifts of the spirit themselves, or that empowerment is 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 really an empowerment f- from the Lord, not necessarily an empowerment that we we earn. Okay? Yeah. But it's a grace gift. They're mm. grace gifts. Okay. okay. Like so meaning there's nothing we do as per se to, to in terms them. of earning. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's charismata grace <laughs> gifts. <laughs> oh, that's the uh, Greek. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you talked about faith. If we prophesy, let's prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. Yeah. Now, among us, the gifts is faith. Does that mean the exercising of faith, the gift, would also be according to the proportion of our faith? <laughs> can you <laughs> can you distinguish faith as a gift for us? All right. Okay. So um, obviously, when when we are studying uh, certain dynamics uh, of the spirit, we will. We, we have words that sometimes, or terminologies that may seem quite similar, yeah. uh, yet uh, they are quite different. And uh, uh, from a careful study, you observe that the gift of faith, all right, is different um, from what generally in the body of Christ we would call general faith. Yeah. Okay. Um, and... Um, Obviously, there are, there, there, there are so many differences we can, we can, we can point out. But first of all, uh, one of the things you need to understand is that as a believer, the Bible says the just <clears throat> shall live by faith. Yeah. All right. It's the just shall live by faith, meaning every believer. There is no believer who, does, who should not 
function by faith. Every believer should walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, right? So um, on, a, on, a, on a general scale, we all live by faith. However, uh, with regards to the gifting, okay, what makes it different is this. Number one, um, have you observed with the gifts of the Spirit? The Bible says the Holy Spirit, you know, dispatches them. Yeah. And gives them. Hmm. But it just it doesn't just say gives them. It says he gives as he wills. Yeah. It simply means if he's going to give you the gift, uh, word of knowledge, yeah, and uh, word of wisdom, if he if he wills that those are the only two manifestations, then those are the only two manifestations. Mm. Yes. So it simply means those other gifts, including the gift of faith, is also willfully dispatched. Okay. Yes, it's also willfully dispatched. This simply, <laughs> this simply means not everyone may have the gift of faith. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah. what you're saying is, mm. if I'm getting you right, yeah, is that we have faith that's generally given to the believer. Yes. Every believer has faith. Yes. Uh, I mean, on the it's on the basis of faith that we actually receive Christ. Exactly. But the gift is distinguished because it's not given to everyone. So it's. Yes, specific people that have the gift of faith. How does the gift of faith operate? Well, before, uh, if I can, if I if I can draw you back, perhaps yeah. I would I would like to be more clear on my distinguishing. Okay. Because uh, uh, maybe just for uh, for viewers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the sake of viewers out there, you will observe. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us something also about just general faith. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, 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 it tells us that faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And uh, hearing the word of God. Okay? Yeah. That's how faith comes. And, and, and that's how you also build in faith. Mm. Okay. But then uh, remember, okay, that faith that comes by hearing uh, uh, and hearing the word of God, that faith when it's built you you usually get to practice it for your personal devotion and your personal life. Yeah. But have you observed what guidance is given concerning the gifts? It says the gifts of the spirit or the manifestation of the spirit is given to everyone for the profit of all. Mm. So that gifting or whatever gifting you're going to receive is for the sake of others. It simply means when it's expressed, it's for the sake of others. So not necessarily for, for your personal. Yes. So okay. that's 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 one of the ways I think we can uh, uh, distinguish it. So that someone may not, ah, how can God not okay. you know, give this gift. In, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So it's yeah. really for the sake of others. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 not necessarily uh, uh, for the sake of uh, yourself. Yeah. So um, that's obviously one way. Uh, the, the second, the, the second way, as I've already uh, uh, brought it out, is that uh, uh, the spirit gives according to how he definitely wills, yeah. and also um, that faith comes by hearing. You know, that, that's that's general faith. Okay, so I think that's a basic way. I I, I, I could try to. Uh, explain to distinguish or it from, distinguish it from general faith exactly, exactly okay how exactly would you say this gift operates if i trace back to uh, as I, as i said earlier we've done yeah. two gifts so far yeah. uh, word of wisdom and word of knowledge word yeah. of knowledge being one of my favorite even though it's uh, seemingly a controversial gift yeah uh, yeah because people have a lot to say about about that but exactly. but but faith as a gift how yeah. exactly can I, is it something I can identify? If I see someone operate, mm -hmm. can I point at it and say, wait, that was the gift of faith? I, well, I don't know if you, if you no, get my get question. You. I yeah. get you, I get yeah. you, I get your point. Now, uh, I, I wanted to bring this point before I, I even um, uh, explain. Yeah. I've, I've come to observe that sometimes it's very difficult uh, to make uh pinpoint observations of certain manifestations. Uh, and the best the best example really I would give is have you observed if if you are if you are a farmer, yeah. Uh, you don't work with one tool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no you don't. You don't work with one tool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't work with one tool. And 
you'll find that uh, even though you're not working, here you are, if, if we're saying you're clearing the land, mm. you have different tools altogether, okay? Sometimes what a hoe can do, a shovel can do. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I know, having been at a boarding school where they asked us to dig beans <laughs> our height. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes what a hoe can do, a shovel can do, yeah. what a wreck can do, something else can do. So um, I think that's why KJV calls it the manifestation of the spirit. Okay. Because uh, here you are, you're manifesting something else. But then when a certain need arises, it's, it's like it, you're speaking to someone. Uh, I know you've already touched these gifts. You're speaking to someone, but then yeah. there's a manifestation of word of knowledge. While yeah, you're still yeah. speaking to them, there's a need for the manifestation of word of wisdom. Yeah. While you're speaking to them, there's a need for the manifestation of another gift. You know? yeah, so yeah. Actually, they, they work intertwined. <laughs> exactly. Mo mo mostly. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So they, are, they are like tools. I like that. Uh, <laughs> I like that. It's like... Uh, uh -huh. Gardening, yes, using multiple tools. Exactly. Mm. So if we're going to say, mm, point at the gift of faith, it will, it might look like uh, uh, another power gift, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> in expression. Uh, but, um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Jesus going mm. to a man saying, um, do you want to be healed? And he says, oh, I have no man to push me into the, then he says, rise up, pick up your bed and walk. Yeah. Would that be a manifestation of the gift of faith in, in the way he used it that way? Or would we say, I know it's a thin line because as yeah. you say, there's, a, there's the manifestation because of a spirit. And there's a miracle there. There's also a miracle. That <laughs> <laughs> so when, which uh, the workings of miracles is a gift as well. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I like to view workings of miracles as something you, mm -hmm. you perform in that you actually do an action. Like you remember mm -hmm. um, the Shunammite woman uh, gives Elijah a place to sleep and he asks, what do yeah. you need? Ah, I need a child. Yeah. A year later, the woman has a child, but the child dies. And so yeah. Elijah is called saying, ah, you gave me a child and the child has passed away. So he goes and lays on top of the child yeah. uh, in order to raise the child. So is that, uh, I like then, to think of that and like then, as a working but, but where does he get the <laughs> conviction to lay on a child uh, uh, isn't he so, so, so that's, the that's, <laughs> that's yeah would you say the gifts of the spirit operated before christ or is this a new testament concept would you say prophets generally did these things but not as gifts or maybe they just weren't known to us okay well from 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 a from a doctrinal uh, perspective um i know uh, let's let's just say God's empowerment has already has always been there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe in in the New Testament we loved we we, we call them gifts of the Spirit. Uh, uh, but one of the things maybe we we could highlight, especially from the Old Testament, is how they will they would maybe be God, uh, the seven spirits of God. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, where one has. Uh, just a different empowerment, uh, mm. wisdom, mm. you know. Mm. But remember, even though it says the serve spirits of God, even in the New Testament, the gifts are still, you know what, uh, dispatched yeah, uh, yeah. by the Spirit. And then the same way, uh, um, uh, the seven spirits of God would work as well. It would be something specific, yeah. willfully given. Yeah. 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 Uh, to yeah this reminds me of, the story of Moses when God calls him up to the mountain, telling him about how he should do the, the tabernacle. Yeah. And so he tells him, I have chosen, uh, I've forgotten his name, but yeah. I have filled him with the spirit of wisdom. wisdom. I have filled him with the spirit of God in yeah. wisdom exactly. and craftiness yes. in order to be able to put the instructions I've given you to. Bezalel. Yeah. Oh, that was his name? Yeah. Oh, truly a pastor, eh? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. Show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. And the podcast is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Yeah. Subscribe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so I, I think I do. It gives me a clearer picture. The, the way it operated, also maybe because the spirit did not dwell in. Exactly. So meaning it was a, a momentary thing. 
yeah. I guess, like we see in the life of Samson, mm -hmm. where the spirit of might comes upon him exactly. in an instant. Yes. But he's not always that way. Exactly. Ah, okay. That's interesting. Could you give but us... But it's a manifestation either way. It's a manifestation. I, I, if I may ask you as well, mm. I know the spirit of the Lord dwells in you, but uh, can you automatically manifest any of the gifts? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> so not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. on a yeah. doctrinal perspective, yeah, we can give them different terminologies, but hey, it will still be the workings of of, of the spirit at the end of the, the, the day. same operation. Yeah, eh? it's the same operation. Maybe one is just a shadow, mm, and the other mm, one is a clear. Mm. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, because you know, actually, now now that you mentioned that, when you think about it, yeah. uh, was it Peter or Paul that healed people with the shadow and handkerchief? Yeah. I don't know what you would call that gift. I think it's a bit hard, as you say, to pinpoint yeah. a gift to say, oh, this gift is this. Yes. That gift is that. Maybe exactly. the revelatory gifts are a bit easier to mm -hmm. explain. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. We can't necessarily put the operations of God in boundaries yeah and 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 and, and, the, and, and the box mm. was he's we had, we're talking about the holy spirit a one who's got limitless potential mm. so <laughs> yeah yeah so you can't say uh even when he's working he can he has to work one gift at a time <laughs> he wants to work both of them at both once, of, yeah yeah you know <laughs> mm, that's interesting yeah. <laughs> what has been your experience generally uh with with the gifts of the spirit do you have personal um ways that you choose to develop your own gifts are there ways that you've said okay maybe every one month i'll heal one person mm -hmm. or i don't know what how, how do you develop your gifts as a minister um well for me <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would i would i would rather change that statement yeah but to uh, and choose to say I develop myself, okay. Then rather than developing the gifts, because uh, remember we're dealing with the spirit of God who's got a limitless potential. Yeah. And if he's got a limitless potential, um, uh, the only thing that can limit him from expressing himself to a certain dimension is me as the vessel. The vessel. Remember that's why I said there's there's a treasure. Um, uh, there's this treasure in earthen vessels. Yeah. So the only one that can limit uh, uh, how uh, something is to be done is me. Have you have you observed um, in the parable of the talents? Mm. Uh, there were three individuals that were given talents. Okay. Yeah. They were that were made stewards. So one was given uh, this number, another, and the other one obviously had one. Okay. Now two of them uh, in their uh, own capacity all right oh and by the way the bible says they were given uh according to their capacity mm. so already that's so that something. that tells us something <laughs> yes it okay. tells us something okay. that your capacity matters mm. yeah <laughs> so um the one who both the, the first two that were given yielded according to their capacity yeah all right yet the other one buried <laughs> and I and I get the, you've been saying this from the start about yeah. how we can make our gifts inactive, yes. burying them, yes. so to say. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 uh, you know, it's like I I love to tell. That's why I tell people uh, we are gifted, uh, and even though we are gifted, it's you to choose whether you're going to be dominant or dominant. Mm. Okay, it's, it's it's like a, it's even it's like a volcano. Have Have you noticed there there are volcanoes that are described? Um, as dormant volcanoes yeah. and active volcanoes, yeah. but all of them have lava. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah. that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, but all of them have lava. Yeah. yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, there is a certain place that God wants us to really uh, improve ourselves that He may use us. In in, in the book of uh, it pours right into Timothy as. As he talks about a great house, he says there are different vessels, some of clay, some of this. Mm. And then he says, some are of honor and some of dishonor. Mm. And then he says, if you want to be a vessel of honor, he, you should purge yourself. Mm. You should purge yourself. Then you will be useful. It says you'll be useful to the master to do every good work. Yeah. So it simply means there is nothing wrong really with the work. 
Mm. But who needs to be dealt with is the worker. Mm. The vessel. It's the vessel. Yeah. So um, uh, at the end of the day, uh, for me to allow the expression of the giftings of God yeah. uh, to to really grow, uh, I, I, I really had to work on myself. I had to uh, uh, take time to improve myself on the platform of prayer, to read the word of God more, to understand even the gift, the giver of the gifts himself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How can I partner with, uh, uh, I mean, I for me to work better in the gifts, I should also learn to partner with the giver of the with gifts. The giver. Mm. So, um, so those, are, those, those are some of the things. So if I were to give a practical example, one of the first uh, manifestations of the spirit that began to uh, operate in my life is the word of knowledge. Okay. Yeah. And um, I noticed that for me, the word of knowledge would easily manifest when I am praying a lot, but not just praying, but praying for people. Mm. Like I'm interceding. Mm. So when I'm interceding, so you find that I'm interceding and then um, I'll, I'll, I'll get, you know, uh, a, a revelation of somebody and I'll pray in that regard and even write mm. whatever I've gotten. So what would happen is that throughout the week, I'll, I'll, I'll pray for people, I'll intercede for them, and I'll get um, uh, revelatory direction uh, yeah. over them. Then Sundays when I go to church, I open my book <laughs> up <laughs> and start telling people one by one, one by this one. This is the question I've actually had mm. on the gift of word of knowledge. And I've seen people execute it in church. They prophesy to 30 people on one Sunday mm -hmm. or, or they give a word of knowledge to 30 people on one Sunday. Does it happen for, for some of them that every word comes in that instant? Or could it be that, as you have said, mm -hmm. you were praying before, yeah. you got some of these words, could some of them have been dreams and these people uh, only minister them at that point? Or I, I, I do understand also that these things work differently for different people. Yeah. But in your execution of this gift would you say you've had this experience where the words that you give don't all come in at, that very at that moment? moment of course of course of course of course uh, I've, I've had i've had some ananias moments yeah where god speaks to ananias and says there is this man you need to pray for yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's so of tassas and gives him the address Ah, nice. <laughs> uh, you'll find him on this street, Shan, 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 gives him the address. Yeah. Okay, so sometimes you, 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 uh, and, he, and he says, uh, and, he, and obviously reviews uh, more things about him. So uh, uh, Ananias obviously got uh, that word way before he actually interacted with Paul. With Paul, So, yeah. uh, hey, God will, will communicate very interesting ways. You can even communicate in the dream. He will communicate while you are praying. Mm. And sometimes just right at the moment. But, but bit. yeah, but for me when I was starting, um, um, I was not so I was not so sensitive right in the moment, you know? <laughs> so okay. I had to grow into it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had to grow into it. By the way, I want to take you a bit uh, in a in a bit further yeah by asking you the this question yeah i guess it's a scripture i love the book of hebrews uh -huh. i have so many questions from the book of hebrews alone mm. there's a scripture that talks about how for those that have tasted of the heavenly gift uh, -huh. uh those that have partaken of of, of the goodness of god and <laughs> have tasted of the powers <laughs> uh, you know where i'm going with this the of the age to come uh -huh. When he says that, is he referring to the gift, tasting of the powers of the age to come? Because I know that uh, I've been doing some study in, uh, in eschatology, and I know before this we we had one or two just uh, chats about this. But from my understanding, when this age elapses and mm -hmm. the new age begins, we'll have new bodies, obviously, yeah. which may have different abilities. Yeah. Um, I like what. I heard a man of God recently say, God is not a miracle worker. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he does not perform miracles in the sense that in his realm where he exists, those are no more, yeah. no more manifestations. It's like uh, if a fish breathed out of water, yeah. that would be a miracle. Yeah. Uh, it, has, it dies out of water. Mm. But we aren't performing a miracle by breathing. 
out of water. He explained it that way. So now, when you talk about the powers of the age to come, I do understand there's a possibility mm -hmm. that our bodies might have different abilities that would make some of these things normal. Mm -hmm. But is he referring to the gifts when he talks about the powers of the age to come? No. Uh, since we're talking about the gift of faith, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've decided <laughs> to, to go into... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I had to bring a question that had to just... <laughs> yeah, but... I, I, I tell people, you know, there's, there are certain scripture uh, writings that may not have uh, too much detail given to them. Yeah. And only just leaves us with uh, revelatory uh, explanations. <laughs> and, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> we explain on the basis yeah. of uh, yeah. personal revelations. <laughs> personal revelations. <laughs> <laughs> so even if I were to uh, make my point right now, it yeah. will not necessarily be doctrinal or established or authoritative uh, guidance. Yeah. But uh, though, let uh, me, let, because you're a prophet, right? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you this. Yeah. How, what place, <laughs> oh, wow, this might be a very tricky question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe let me phrase it in a more acceptable <laughs> way for the viewers. <laughs> oh my goodness. But what place? The viewers are trying to learn about it. <laughs> but anyway. I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, what place does doctrine and i'm asking this also because of faith yeah. uh i like how you put it saying it's not easy to always pinpoint yeah. saying this is this manifestation or this is that manifestation yeah. how then does given the way spiritual manifestations can be spontaneous yeah. and can also differ depending on the vessel mm -hmm. how what place does doctrine have in terms of our spiritual manifestations in terms of revelation, why, where do we draw the line between revelation and doctrine? Uh, or does all revelation have to be in line with doctrine? Uh, if so, is there a specific doctrine? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Uh, is this in relation with the gifts? <laughs> Are we done first of all with the power, the age, the, the power? <laughs> the powers of the age to come. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah we're, 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 we're done with that. I yeah. think I, I do understand. In, I'm also asking. You're a viewer and you obviously are interested in that. Uh, all I would say is um, please <laughs> don't let that confuse you. Uh, just look at it as an empowerment. I, I love to, I, I love to, to sometimes draw things back to its raw and simple form. Yeah. So if I don't understand, I may not fully understand something, I'll just, I'll just call it, if you say the powers of the ages to come, I would rather call it an empowerment. Yeah. Rather than pinpointing and you tell me uh, the gifts of the spirit. But if you tell me in the ages to come, you need the gifts of the spirit for it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, they are, they are primarily they are given to profit all. Yeah. So why would you need them in the age to come? Yeah. I guess this is where my question comes from uh -huh. because I'm trying to understand that. Yeah. I guess I this also, is where... I, I, I also remember there was a time somebody asked me a question I, and I know sometimes we want we, we, we want answers to everything and someone once asked me and said, uh, Pastor, uh, I, I, I saw that... Um, Satan wanted the body of Moses. Mm. And then they asked me, what did he want? Why did uh, he want the body yeah. of Moses? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I said, I don't know. We've not been given <laughs> what, what the Lord has not permitted to be revealed concerning that context or what has not been revealed has not been revealed. Yeah. So I guess this brings me back to my question Yeah. on where we draw the line between revelation and doctrine because yeah. some people might have explanations for that yes obviously uh, on the basis of revelation or of revelation mm -hmm. yeah. so this always this question always brings me because i know we are discussing the gift of faith here yeah. yes but explaining the gift of faith in itself can lead us into a whole lot of doctrinal definitions exactly just as we had to distinguish general faith mm -hmm. from the gift of faith exactly. uh, i guess this also takes me to questions like oh okay if these are powers or if these are gifts that are divine enablement enablements yeah would that also be tied to the powers of the age to come that's i guess that's where that question was coming from but maybe to seal it where do we draw the line between doctrine and revelation is doctrine 
something that must keep us within certain boundaries yeah. of revelation or is revelation able to extend beyond those boundaries well um the doctrine how do you personally take revelation in your in your personal life have you ever had those revelations that came like mm. <sighs> this may not necessarily sit with what i believe doctrinally have you ever had such an no <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, yeah. uh, doctrine should really be based on the uh, on obviously what uh, we would describe as the written uh, word of God. Okay? Yeah. So that's where we 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 should source our belief system, uh, our authoritative truth, based on uh, the written word of God. Uh, in the same way, uh, revelation should should never be outside the word of god as well yeah <laughs> it should never even if it sounds uh uh like I'll, I'll i'll give an example if if right now if i talk about uh, uh your maybe your appetite mm. okay maybe on a revelation and and i and i give you a word concerning your your appetite that Bahatram Dan's appetite is not written. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, in yeah. the in the Bible, okay. It's it's yet the revelatory uh, uh, word that I've given you, I can still trace it to the scriptures. Yeah, but the Bible is still able to tell us that uh, uh, it's, it's able to guide us how we ought to be diligent to keep ourselves. Yeah, you, you get my point. So, revelation still should be traced uh, uh to the scriptures yeah uh, why because uh the scriptures have a source revelation should also have a source mm. yeah so and then we should also not forget that uh revelation is not only provided by one source mm. revelation can come from different sources mm. yeah can, can you can you explain more on that uh what i mean when i say it it, it, it can come from different sources it simply means uh even uh, a, even a source that is not God yeah. can reveal something to you or provide information. Ah, okay, to you. okay, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. like, 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 like. Remember, um, uh, Satan shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. Yes, yes. Uh, now, uh, if you were to think about it, uh, how does Jesus see the kingdoms of the world? Okay, how is it shown to him? Yes, <laughs> you know. So, you know, so he's he's having a revelation in that moment, mm. and then there is guidance that is given. The guidance that is given is, uh, uh, worship me, and mm. everything will be yours. Yeah, you know. So uh, now Jesus is obviously the word. Have you noticed? Have you have you noticed he? He used doctrine or scriptural reference to trample on that revelation. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. So <laughs> he says, "It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve Him only." Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but think about it. At the end of the day, the authority, the glory, and uh, dominion was supposed to be gotten by Jesus. Yeah. But it was never meant to be gotten through worship. Through that method. There was already a scriptural guidance that was given. Genesis 3.15. The seed of this woman yeah. will crush mm, mm. the head. Mm. Uh, not will bow down. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus already knew the scriptural guidance. Okay, so uh, at the end of the day, Revelation should still submit to the scriptures. Revelation should still submit to the scriptures yeah <laughs> yeah okay that's interesting i i guess in my time talking to people especially in recent times yeah one thing i've realized about uh having to explain a lot of scriptural concepts to people yeah. is some of the questions they raise yeah. would have to do with their general understanding of life yeah. uh, their general understanding of whatever field they 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 understand mm. and on that basis many people fail to uh to see god how do i explain it i guess for many people it's strange to understand the concept of having to go back to scripture 
Yeah. Yes, but I guess it's something that must be overemphasized. Exactly. Our need to rest all our beliefs exactly. on, on the scripture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in, in terms of faith, have you <laughs> had <laughs> have you had inst- instances that you can point at to say, oh, this was the manifestation of faith in your time ministry? Yeah. Um I know I put you on the hot seat. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are ready. Be ready in all season. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, have you noticed uh, uh, the Bible tells us this is a manifestation? Okay. All right. This is, this is a manifestation. And uh, if I were to just uh, differentiate it, before I give my example, if I were to differentiate it from the general kind of faith, uh, in our general kind of faith, we are able to build it ah okay yes. okay yeah we're able to uh, to build our general kind of faith uh in in romans 12 verse 3 it tells us that we have a measure of faith yeah all right we all have a measure of faith which we are, we build how do we build it um uh we're able to build it by hearing and hearing the word of god uh and then it's very interesting that also in jude 20 the bible tells us that building your most holy faith Mm. by praying in the Holy Ghost. So it's it, it does show us that in our general kind of faith, depending on the interactions and whatever goes on around us, we are able to walk in it and withdraw from it. Mm. Yes, mm. to walk in it and withdraw from it. Remember, uh, let's, let's be clear that Peter did not start with sinking. Yes, yes. <laughs> he, <laughs> he walked with, to Jesus. Huh? He walked. He, he started walking. Yeah, yeah. So his walking was a demonstration of his personal faith. But the Bible says when he saw the winds and everything around him, uh, uh, he sank. It simply means he withdrew. Mm, you know, wow. From faith. Wow. And uh, he eventually sank. Yeah. Now, um, the way uh, I personally believe the gift of faith works is um, it doesn't matter the level of faith faith <laughs> mm. you know it doesn't matter uh, the level of faith that your personal uh, capacity has but then it's a, it's like there's this supplement mm. of, of 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 faith that is just given to you that will you know cause you um uh to function uh, in a moment yeah in that moment mm. you know in, 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 the, in that very moment. We'll still continue with the Gifts of the Spirit series and we'll have some more men of God come into the studio just to educate us a bit more on some of these gifts and give us a bit more insight. But we'll have Prophet Gomezio in studio again soon uh, to discuss other things, uh, <laughs> the prophetic revelations and whatnot. Thank you so much for coming Thank you for to the studio, me. sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm happy it's been a while mm. we sat down and talked. This this has been good. Yeah. Yeah, and we had a lot of discussions prior to this as well. Mm-hmm. It has been a good day of fellowship. Indeed. indeed. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.